Ladies and gentlemen, for our final presentation of the evening, the CEO of Fiat, DS Automobiles, and Global Chief Marketing Officer of Stellantis, Olivier Francois. Thank you. And thank you so much for sticking with us uh, tonight. I know it's late, I, I, I'll make that um, uh, short. Uh, knowing that looking at the first line of the slide, uh, I guess you are thinking another car, uh, CEO crushing a climate conference, uh, telling us it's safe to drink the washer fluid. And the second line makes it even worse. Uh, as you can see here, I'm also a marketer, I, and I know what you think about marketers. They blow enough hot air uh, to contribute to climate change, even in this room. But luckily, there is a third line, uh, which uh, says that I live here. I live in Miami. And you know, to me, Miami is sweet life as its best. Uh, well, the only time it might not feel like uh, spring break is during spring break. But you see my point, Miami is all about Dolce Vita like Fiat. Now, whoever lives here also knows uh, that climate change is, is at our door. Uh, so uh, this is, I think, the perfect place to speak to Dolce Vita and a more sustainable mobility. By the way, the perk of living uh, in Miami is that I could literally come here by bicycle or paddleboard, but today I rode my bike. Uh, it's a better look in business attire. <laughs> so let's go back to the reason I'm here. Uh, and obviously, I'm not here to sell electric bicycles. I'm not uh, uh, here to pedal you uh, a car either. I'm here because uh, I want to change the narrative attached to the auto industry. I'm here to listen to learn and possibly to make a difference. Uh, you know, when you work for a company at my level, uh, you are always in a position to help make uh, that difference. And good thing, I am at the right company. Fiat has always strived for efficiency way before climate change was a buzzword. You know, think of the first Cinquecento in 1957. It was minimalist genius uh, in the world of sheet metal and fins. Fiat is a company that has been around for 125 years because it has always leaned into what's next. That's what fuels us, regardless of what fuel propels our vehicles. Now, the second reason is um, this uh, new Fiat uh, aspire um, uh, to be as ethical as it, as it is practical. So what I mean here is, uh, you know, we, we took our most critical model, uh, our most iconic model, and if I may, our most sold model, and we made it all electric and only electric. So you get it. Uh, it's not an easy decision, uh, but it is not like we are killing the cash cow. Quite the opposite. We give it a future. And that's probably why Leonardo DiCaprio signed on to uh, collaborate on the launch in Europe. And speaking of doing right, uh, we are taking the commitment even further. So our new Cinquecento is also red. That's why we chose to launch this car in the red version first. I mean, red, obviously, not as a color, but as uh, an organization. Look, I should be um, proud of the fact that Cinquecento is an extraordinary product. It should, I should be proud of the awards. But you know what I'm most proud of? Uh, well, it's the fact that Fiat is the only car brand that was picked by my friend Bono uh, for red. Now I know this room is familiar with causes more than with cars, uh, so I won't try to sell you the car, but rather the cause. Mine is for Fiat to deliver on our group's commitment to carbon neutrality by 2038 and getting halfway by 2030. So to be specific, the Stellantis group sells about uh, 7 million cars a year globally, of which 1.4 million are from Fiat. So Fiat has a big, weight, big weight, and this comes with a big responsibility. Now, Fiat is not just bigger than you think, it's also more Italian than you think. That's why this new Fiat 500e uh, doesn't just have a, a face, a smile, uh, and... Uh, a voice. That's literally the sound of the car when it starts. You'll see, it's very, very special. 
Uh, but it does not just have a smile, a face, and a voice. It has a conscience. You see, uh, the fact that the world is buying green, green is great, but the fact uh, that uh, there is a conscience behind our business decision, that is even greater. But now, what about the consumer? Well, uh, when you uh, look at the Earth climate, you realize there's a shift towards zero emission uh, is necessary. But when you look at the consumer climate, you understand uh, that the adoption is a bit cooler. Our cars are home here because they are vehicles of change. Now, for us, change started with a vision. Let's make exactly what an electric car should be. So what do I mean here? Let's face it, electric cars are only as good as a charging network around them. No? And as you see, we are working on it. 30,000 fast chargers starting this year. Uh, but let's be clear, the most appropriate use case for pu pure EVs is the urban environment. And that's a little bit what I want to, to tell you here uh, today. You know, urban environment, that's the best cure for wrench anxiety. Uh, and that's why a pure city car EV makes sense for the consumer, for the cities, for the business. So this is my main message today. The conversation shall start here in our congested cities. First, I believe cities have the most to gain from clean mobility. Uh, remember the, the, the before and after uh, photos during the pandemic, breathtaking um, in a good way. By the way, it's not just about the sky, it's also about the ground. We are in Miami, so we know space is at a premium. premium. So smaller cars mean democracy of parking, democracy of access, I mean, to city centers. And last, it's about uh, noise pollution. So uh, you see, electric cars offer a comprehensive solution. Then there's another thing, battery size. You know, big vehicles need big batteries. I mean, large EVs have batteries that weigh almost as much as the whole Cinquecento. So my point here is, a city car should carry precious cargo instead of precious metal. Our iconic test track uh, on the rooftop of the Lingotto in uh, Turin uh, is now home to the second largest hanging garden in Europe, and it's open for anyone in Turin. And second, at our Mirafiori facility, another facility in Torino, uh, we collect solar energy from the rooftop and that solar power charges every 500E that leaves the factory. So let me put it this way, our little, little Cinquecentos will arrive in the US packed with the sun of Italy. So to wrap this, uh, 500 is an icon of Italian design an icon of accessibility, and an icon of change. That's exactly what my job is, feeding the appetite for change, converting as many American driveways as I can, giving people their first taste of an electric future. This is the whole point. Uh, my mission is to take you to more than just work or the store, but into the EV category. Look, back in the days when Fiat started, it introduced uh, an entire generation to mobility. So today, this electric Cinquecento uh, can be people's first EV, introducing a generation of drivers to sustainability. So again, if it is true that EVs are the gateway to greener mobility, our job is to make appealing um, cars that makes the transition as easy and exciting as possible. I want to add a smile uh, by passing the pump, by bringing a bit of la dolce vita to an everyday commute. So this is my message today. You know, duty, the sense of duty, if not of guilt, won't do the job alone. No, what will make the job will be beauty. Because beauty can fuel duty. Aspiration can bring harmony between your wants and your needs. Emotion can electrify motion. And as an unintended consequence, EVs make the driving experience even more fun. So we will make green beautiful, we will make red desirable, and we will use uh, the white space of urban EVs to protect the Vita in Dolce Vita. Thank you.